Today's lesson is called Perfect Squares and Square Roots. So first think, what makes these figures squares? So look at the picture below. You have square A and square B. What makes a square a square? Well, we know the side lengths are equal or congruent. That's really the vocabulary we should be using. We'll talk more about what congruency means later, but congruency just means they're the same, right? So all the side lengths are the same, and there are four right angles. Now, today's lesson isn't really about the shapes themselves. We have these numbers called perfect squares and square roots. They are numbers. But first, we're going to start by showing you why these numbers are called what they're called, and we're going to use a shape that we're familiar with to do that. So in square A, we have to find the side length. So I'm going to go from dot to dot and see that this is 1, 2, 3, 4 for a side length, 4 units. So how do you find the area of a square? Area is multiplying, so no matter how long one side is, the other side is exactly the same. So you would be taking 4 and timesing it by itself, which is 4. Another way to write that is 4 to the second power, or 4 squared. So the formula fi for finding area of a square is actually A equals S squared. You can just take the side and square it. So for us, our area would be equal to our side, which is 4 squared which means our area is 16 units squared. So the area is equal to 4 squared, and the side length is equal to the square root of the area, which was 16, Okay, which would be 4. Now let's move on and try square B. Same thing. Side length is 1, 2, 3 units. For my area, I would do A equals the side squared. So for us, that means the area is 3 squared, which is 9 units squared. So again, that tells us the area was coming from doing 3 squared, which means the side length would be the square root of 9, which is 3. So perfect squares are when you take the counting numbers and multiply them by themselves. So for example, we got an answer in square B of 9. This number is a perfect square because it came from doing 3 times 3 or 3 squared. It's the result of taking a number and timesing it by itself. So let's fill in the blanks together to define what it means to square a number versus taking the square root of a number. I want you to think of these as inverse operations. So going forward and going backward. So if you're squaring a number, you are multiplying a number by itself. That's the same thing as raising it to a power of two. So if I'm taking a number and timesing it by itself, like 3 times 3, that's the same as 3 squared. And the area of the square shape is equal to the side length squared. So the side length squared, 3 squared, is 9, using that example from above. Now, squaring a number is when you multiply the number by itself. Square root of a number is going backwards. It's the opposite or inverse of squaring a number. So the side length of a square shape is equal to the square root of the area. The square root symbol looks like this. Okay? So squaring is going forward, taking the square root is going backward. So we're going to start a little exercise. I'm going to start with you, and then I'm going to pause the video and let you try the rest of the table on your own. It says, if A equals S squared, fill out the table below based on a square side length or area of a square. So moving forward, it's going to be really important and easier for us to think of these again as numbers. We were just using the shapes to introduce you to the idea. Think of the side length as the counting numbers 
and the area as the perfect squares. So just a quick note, the square root symbol, square root one, we're always going to have a positive number as our answer for now as eighth graders. So counting number, if I wanna know the perfect square, I'm gonna take the counting number and times it by itself. So what's S times S? These have exponents of one. We add our exponents when we're multiplying. So our perfect square would be S squared. So showing you with a variable first. Now we can do the same thing with a number. We have two. If I take the counting number and times it by itself, I get four. Four is a perfect square. We can also go backwards. If I give you the perfect square of 16, I know it's the inverse operation to go backwards to take the square root. So if I were to take the square root of 16, what number times itself gives you 16? The answer is 4. And of course, there is a square root button on the calculator as well. So right now, I would like you to pause the video and try to fill in the rest of the chart and then resume the video to go over the answers. All right, now that you had a chance to try on your own, here are the answers to the rest of the table. One, if I times it by itself, gives me one. One is a perfect square. Five times itself is 25. 25 is a perfect square. If 49 is a perfect square and I wanna figure out the counting number, I'm going to take the square root of 49, which is seven. If 100 is a perfect square, I'm going to take the square root of 100, which is 10. If I'm trying to find the perfect square related to a counting number of 8, I would do 8 times itself, which is 64. So filling in the rest of the table, the square root of 81 is 9. 3 squared is 9, so 81, 9 is a perfect square. 36 is a perfect square, so we take the square root to get 6 as the counting number. And x squared is a perfect square, so we take the square root to get x as the counting number. All right, so now for the challenge, close your questions. I'd like you to once again pause the video and try questions one through four. You're going to write three more perfect squares that were not in the chart. Number two, are the square roots of perfect squares rational or irrational, and why? So tying it back to the previous lesson. And then three and four, pushing you forward to think about what's to come. What do you think cubing a number what might mean? And number four, what would be an example of a perfect cube instead of a perfect square? So again, pause the video, try questions one through four, and then resume the video to go over the answers. All right, now that you had a chance to try on your own, number one, here are three more examples of perfect squares, 144, 121, and 169, because 144 came from 12 times 12, 121 came from 11 times 11, and 169 came from 13 times 13. So they were the result of a number times itself. These numbers should be rational. These numbers are all counting numbers. So by default, if you're a counting number, you're also a whole number, you're also an integer, you're also a rational number. What do you think cubing a number means? That's when you multiply a number by itself three times, like an actual shape of a cube, a three-dimensional square. So an example of a perfect cube would be eight. Eight's a perfect cube because you do two times two times two. It's the result of a number times itself three times. So eight is a perfect cube. And I'm sure you could find many more and we'll talk more about cubes in the future. So that concludes your lesson on perfect squares and square roots.